College RAs or police, what's the most memorable event that you've had with college freshmen? Story 1. I have two really memorable RA experiences. This is Purdue in the late 90s. The first is a really terrible one. I was an RA at the same time as Jay Severson. Now, Jay was shot and killed by a resident that was a big dealer. It shook Purdue heavily, but especially the RA, where they were actually called counselors in the community. One was a freshman who had a father that was super hard on him. Now, one night I came back to the dorm, and he's in the hall with a bottle of Jack just hammered. The Purdue dorms are dry, but I told him just to get rid of it and go to bed. Five minutes later, he walks to my room with the bottle, and I told him that I have to write it up now. I never wrote people up, and he just breaks down, like total snot tears break down. He was planning to end himself that night, so I spent the next two hours talking to him and convinced him to see someone professional the next morning. He passed out in my room, and in the morning, he called a real professional and began therapy. I didn't write him up for the alcohol. Story 2. I used to catch people playing possum all the time. Basically, a bunch of students would climb a tree and then drink until they started falling out. The last person in the tree wins. Also found a couple idiots having lightsaber fights once. They unscrewed the fluorescent tubes and were having sword fights with them. One time, a whole floor got scabies and were running back and forth from the laundry room, washing every single item of clothing and linen they had. One resident was hiding a homeless person in the TV room. Now, residents were welcome to have friends on site, and they were also welcome to stay in the TV room and the rec center after lockup. They just had to pull the door closed after themselves when they left. This guy was staying in the TV room with his homeless friend until the RAs finished their rounds, locking him into the TV room, going back and then sleeping in his own room, and then waking up early to go and get back into the TV room before the RAs came around in the morning, unlocking everything again. I woke up around midnight one night because people were firing Roman candles at one of the buildings. We were having problems with some local kids who kept playing pranks on the residents, and naturally I assumed it was them. So I called campus security to deal with it, and they ended up rounding up my own residents. After I gave them all write-ups, one of them asked me why I didn't tell them beforehand that they weren't allowed to set off fireworks on campus. Here's another one that was not from my hall, but still pretty memorable. The RAs from one of the other residences on campus came to us with one of their problems. They kept finding human feces outside of one of their buildings and assumed that it was one of our residents playing pranks on them. Completely reasonable, we had a weird group that year. I told them that I would keep an ear out. When it kept happening, one of their RAs had a stake out and saw the feces being dropped off at one of the windows. Turns out that this resident was setting toilet paper down on his bedroom floor, crapping on it, and then dumping it out the window because he didn't want to use the hall bathroom. On the final night in the halls, I found a room of people each pouring a beer directly into the carpet for their friends who had left the university before the semester finished. Best two years of my life. Well, that's quite the collection of crazy stories. Sounds like your time as an RA was definitely eventful. I don't know whether to laugh or to be horrified at some of the things that you had to deal with. It's a combination of like Animal House and a reality TV show. If I had to give an overall reaction here, I'd say, well, that's wild. You just can't make that stuff up if you tried. Story 3. RA and Campus EMS here. I have had many encounters with drunks and high freshmen, but I have a couple that I will never forget. One of them was during my first year as an RA, living on the fourth floor of my building. I woke up to knocking on my door at around 3 a.m., coupled with the screaming of, there's people outside having fun in my bed. All right, I guess I better not ignore this one. So I head out and see this freshman who reeks of alcohol and stumbles towards his room. Now, the plot twist here is he doesn't live there, and the two students half-clothed open the door. I send him off and go back to bed to be woken up 15 minutes later by some more knocking. Guess who's back? In one hand, he has a water bottle, and the other hand, he has a trimmer. Now, I'm six foot four, and he's pretty tiny, so it did not end well when he tried to shave my beard. Ended up tossing him back into his room, onto his bed, and finally got to go to bed. Story four. I was neither of those, but on my floor my sophomore year, we had freshmen move in. This one guy put blankets all over his floor. Okay, no big deal. I see them do this a lot because the carpet is really ugly, and it actually helped a lot with cleaning. You roll out the blanket and shake it off outside, and then just wash it. Anyway. What this kid did was ridiculous. He had no roommate, but he had people over all the time. And whenever he would have people over, they made a mess. Instead of cleaning the blankets, he just stacked more blankets on top of the old dirty ones. This got so bad and he was so lazy that if he spilled something or had trash like pizza boxes that he didn't want to take out, he put another blanket over everything. This obviously started to smell horrible. So he took air spray and sprayed the crap 
out of his floor, blanket, mattress, room size, couch area. So since there was stuff in between the layers of blankets, the room was all lumpy and wavy, and it started to rise slowly over the year as he piled more blankets. Now Christmas break came, and I told the RA about this, and he went in to check. The blankets from only one semester had already brought the floor to about six inches off the ground. You had to step up to get into his room. Something had to be done, and he was told to get rid of it, or there would be consequences. I left the building and moved to a closer dorm to the music building for the next semester, so I kind of forgot about it. But come May, I went over to that dorm to pick up a friend to take him back home after graduation. People are now moving out of the dorms. I went up to the second floor, and there's the grounds team, using pipe saws and box cutters to cut the dude's now one-foot-thick floor of blankets into squares to get it out of his room. It was grown through with mold of all colors, trash, smelly stuff, and lots of liquid. It was amazing. Story 5. RA here, and one night most of my hall was drinking and preparing to go out. I was quite chill with it as long as nobody did anything stupid or got the police called. I got alerted that the police were being sent up to my floor, but on the other side, because of a report that a kid was passed out in the bathroom. I told a couple rooms on my side to close their doors and turn the music off as a precaution. They did except two guys, Nall and Pick, names slightly changed to protect them, decided to go grab a big trash can and wheel it into their room. Of course, just as they enter the room, the police officers get off the elevator and witness this. They immediately assume that whoever was passed out had gotten into the room and the trash can because puke was going on. My room was right across from them, so I got to witness what happened next. The cops knocked on the door and sidestepped the peephole. After a tense few seconds, the residents opened the door and the cops step in and ask what was going on. And by the time that I've stepped out to see what was going on, Nall says that they were just planning to do some spring cleaning. The cops are suspicious. They survey the room, and the one cop goes, Man, you guys need to do some laundry. It stinks in here. They laughed and said that they don't smell anything. The cops didn't look amused and said to have a good night, and they left. I was chatting with Pick and Nall, and they were practically shaking. They were so nervous. I asked why they were so jittery, and Pick, points to a solo cup on a shelf full of straight whiskey. Naal opens his cabinet, and there are, I'm not kidding, 200-plus empty Four loco cans. The OGs. I'm standing there with my mouth open, asking them why. He said that they were planning to build a pyramid, but decided to scratch that idea. They proceeded to smash all the cans and then hid them at the bottom of the trash can. Well, that's quite the close call for Naal and Pick. It sounds like they were trying to have a wild night and almost got caught, I guess? The fact that they had so many empty Four loco cans and a solo cup of straight whiskey is both impressive and alarming. It's a good thing that they were able to think on their feet and come up with a quick cover story, even if it wasn't entirely believable. I have to admit, though, the idea of them trying to build a pyramid out of Four loco cans is pretty hilarious, but it's probably for the best that they decided against it. All in all, it sounds like a pretty eventful night for everybody involved. Story 6 Two-year RA. I was a junior in my first year as an RA, and my final year as a senior, which was the floor from hell. Now here are my top five. The state police raided our floor after a kid sold goods to an undercover. I had a kid poop on my door in revenge for writing him up for beating up his roommate. I had two residents have a coke off. They held a contest to see who could do the most blow. Both won a trip to the hospital. I had a kid try to MacGyver beer into the building by throwing a rope out of the sixth floor window and then having a dude at the bottom tie it up and then pull it up. I had a kid throw a chair through our lobby window because he lost at Mario Kart. But the Mac Daddy of them all, the creme de la creme, was the story of the assault a cop, domestic violence, and threat to seriously injure a roommate. It was my birthday and I was on duty. My birthday is Halloween. I get a call on the duty phone and a resident was calling to say that they heard weird squeaking sounds next door. Banging is cool, but please be quiet. Well, crap, fine, it's 3 a.m. and I have nothing better to do, so I walk to the room and it smells like hell. Well, I say open her up or I have to open it up. And a worried girl opens and says that this guy and her were trying to hook up. He started fading, puked on himself, then passed out, hit his head, and is now crapping himself. Ah, crap. I now have minors with alcohol and someone with a medical emergency. This isn't good. All right, so I phone 911, the campus cops, and explain, and in rush the medics to take away the poopy kid. Well, Crapstain wakes up from his drunk stupor and starts trying to fight the medics for kidnapping him, and you can't take me, Obama, blah, blah, blah. 
Well, he cracked a cop in the jaw, which led to him getting arrested and sent to the hospital. Triple crap. I am now going to have to do so much paperwork from this. It's now 4 a.m. on my birthday. The shift started the day before my birthday, and I watched a couple come from up the stairs. Me and the cop see the girls kind of shaken up, so then we keep an eye on her. She says something about going home, and the guy grabs her and slaps her in front of the cop. I know this is not going well, so he books after the guy and takes him in. Because this happened in a dorm, I now have to document it too. Not a woe is me, but when it rains, it pours situations. To end the night, I walked into the lobby, bleary-eyed and dead tired, and the cops joked that there is no way that you get to call us again, and you have seen it all. Well, nope. A resident threw his laptop at his roommate over him taking his ramen for drunk food. This led to him threatening serious harm. And if I recall correctly, it was, I'll rip your guts out. So yeah, I called the cops again. That was the most memorable one, but I've got way, way more. Story 7. I'll give you three stories. We had a bamboo forest near campus. Now, I was on duty once when two dudes dragged an entire tree into the main lounge and up the stairs. I asked them what was going on. I asked these two guys like WTF a lot, to be fair, and they said that they were making rafts. I wrote it up, of course, but it wasn't easy to figure out what to write up. Like, I settled on destruction of campus property, since I'm pretty sure that you can't swipe an entire bamboo tree. Dude on my floor was having hallway earthquake, shaking, top volume, grunting, loud, fun time. Like, really, really, really loud adult time. It was kind of late. And I'm just sitting there playing my video games, waiting for it to be over, hoping that I don't have to go knock on its door, because, you know, what the F do I want to do that for? I mean, it's a noise violation, of course, but I'm hoping that everyone can just let it go. Anyways, then I get a phone call. Now, if someone is actually complaining about it, I've got to go knock. So I pick up the phone with trepidation, and a floor mate decides to share with me how much he's enjoying the adult noises. Yeah, I, I don't care if you're my resident. This conversation is over. Click. And the last one, this is the first guy again. I'm doing the end of the year room inspections. Now, I expect this to go badly. Mr. Bamboo has destroyed thousands of dollars in campus property this year, and he shattered a floor-length window in the main lounge and broke every damn light on the third floor while drunk. Every one. So I go in and his room is surprisingly neat and undestroyed. Except his desk. It looks like a black version of Slimer masturbated all over it. I asked him what on God's green earth is coating his desk. A goo. He would not elaborate beyond that. I marked the desk down as destroyed. And I'm sure as hell wasn't cleaning it. Well, those stories are definitely uh, unique. It sounds like you had your hands full as an RA dealing with all sorts of shenanigans from your residents. From the tree stealing to an excessively loud fun time, it seems like you never know what you're going to get. And let's not forget about Mr. Bamboo and his penchant for destruction. It's a good thing that you were able to keep a sense of humor about it and maintain your professionalism, even when faced with some pretty absurd situations. But hey, look, I'm sure that these stories will make for some interesting anecdotes and to share for years to come. Story 8. There are a bunch, but the one that tops the list is the smell. And there was also the time that I was almost stabbed, the multi-floor soap fight, the common room adult doll on tour day, the time a student almost stabbed three people, the possible study room distillery, the hallway threesome my coworker ran into, the used rubber board. None of it was ever as bad as the smell. I was an RA in a fairly quiet building. We had a few troublemakers, but generally it was quiet and calm. And it was decently clean for a crusty old residence building, except for the third floor. The third floor smelled. About a month in, it developed the weird, sickly, sweet reek of rot that would permeate for the rest of the year. Rot with hints of something else underneath. Now, after a week, we realized that it probably wasn't any of the usual issues, like a chicken dinner left sitting out in the study room. After two weeks, we got tired of waiting. So we spent a while trying to figure out the source, sniffing around, keying into rooms, until finally we tracked it down to a single room in the corner. So we put in a work order. Now finally, maintenance comes and goes through the radiator and ends up finding a rat skeleton. It had been in there so long that it was almost decayed, hence the stench. So, issue resolved, right? Well, unfortunately not. The smell simply grew. It deepened, grew richer, an oddly musky odor of putrence filling the floor. Students complained, but we said that we couldn't do anything. But we tried. We looked around, checked the floor, checked common rooms, and as the stench grew, we began to try keying into rooms to see if we could find it. By now, when you did your duty rounds of three, there were sprints to check the problems rather than friendly check-ins. 
So eventually, in our search, we got back to that corner room, and we keyed in again. Until the day that I die, I will never forget the scent. It forced its way past clenched lips and held breath straight to my tongue, where the iron tang of blood mingled with the rot. One RA stumbled away, gagging, and there it was, the source. Sitting on the radiator, in the window, midwinter with the sun full on it, the radiator going full blast beneath it was a mason jar. Inside the jar was five months' worth of used tampons. In the aftermath, we requested that the student clean them, time and again, since that we could not touch the biohazard. We tried to explain that it wasn't sanitary. She would not remove them. She also, at various times, complained about the smell on the floor, apparently not realizing that she was the cause. Story 9. Not a cop or an RA, but I went home over the weekend and came back while my roommates were out. I had been back for 15 minutes or so when my RA knocked on my door. I opened it up and saw her staring a hole through me and finally said, we need to talk about what happened this weekend. I asked, well, what the hell are you talking about? And she said, last night was unacceptable, and if it happens again, we'll press charges. I was pretty confused and repeated, what the hell are you talking about? I have been gone all weekend. My roommate apparently got drunk, poorly tried to sneak in a girl into the dorms after opposite gender visiting hours were over, 2 a.m., and when the person at the front desk caught him, knocked over a bunch of stuff, poured a bottle of Gatorade on the floor, and then told the girl to run and don't look back. I laughed, but the RA didn't see the humor. Well, 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 looks like we have a classic case of mistaken identity here. I mean, sure, I may have party hard in my college days, but I was always a gentleman and followed the rules, unlike this roommate here. I mean, seriously, pouring Gatorade on the floor and telling a girl to run? What is this, a cheesy rom-com? And knocking over stuff while trying to sneak someone in? That's just amateur hour. In the comments, what crazy or ridiculous things have you guys seen a college freshman do?